and welcome back to VBuzz. You're still here with myself, Sharita, and the lovely Shankri. Oh. Now, Shankri, mm -hmm. you practiced a martial art before, correct? Mm -hmm. I was in Taekwondo for 10 years. Wow, 10 yeah. years. That's, a, that's dedication right there. I've never managed to stick to any so far, but you know, it, I might just find one that I love in the future because here in VBuzz we featured several forms of martial arts on V Arena over the past couple of years as we strive to inform you of the best practices out there for you. On today's show we speak to Dr. Suhai Zisad who has decades worth of experience practicing and teaching the martial arts. He founded the Stealth Organization back in 1989 which has been dedicated to educating people on martial arts and the sciences and values behind it. He is also the president of the Malaysian Martial Arts Federation and he joins us today to talk to us about the martial arts in Malaysia and how the Federation is supporting our athletes. Welcome to VBuzz, Dr. Taizi. My pleasure. It is, it is our pleasure to have you on the show, Dr. Suhaizi. Um, now, you've been practicing martial arts for many years now, um, over 20 years. Uh, but what do you remember what first, um, you know, piqued your interest in ma pursuing martial arts? Yeah. Um, when I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. I learned martial arts she liked, from my grandfather's friend and then after that I get involved to karate slowly I move into other arts like taekwondo kendo and uh, the latest one yong mudo is a combination of taekwondo uh -huh. and also judo ah. You know, being 10 years old, you know, at that time, children try a lot of things. You know, you, you take up a, a musical instrument or you try a sport, but then you always end up switching. What do you think really made you stick for so long in the martial arts scene? Yeah, because by that time, I'm living in a small village. Uh -huh. So it seems like I don't have any piano, violins, all those things. Because of that limitations, I choose sports, combat mm -hmm. sports. So I, I see people train. Mm -hmm. So how can I be stronger? How can I improve my ability mm -hmm. in combat engagement? So slowly I get to learn. Actually, I asked for, from my grandfather, can I join him? Because yeah. he's also a teacher at that time, oh. a master at that time. But he said, no, not from me. You can learn from my friend. Um, Why is that so? Um, because he wants me to not to follow him 100%. So mm -hmm. I should learn from his friend better. Ah, so then there's a combination of knowledge there, yeah, you know, between yeah. um, your grandfather and you. Um, and it, it just now, when we were having a chat before the show, I tried to ask you, uh, Doctor, how many different forms of martial arts you've learned before? And you said, oh, the list goes on. So perhaps yeah. now is the time that you could share with us yeah, the martial arts that you practice. Okay. Uh I'm more popular with Taekwondo because okay. I'm known through Taekwondo and because, by the way, Taekwondo is very popular here. Mm. So then after that, I moved into, uh, I started Karate, then I moved to Taekwondo, then other Japanese art and Korean art, such as Hapkido, Jiu-Jitsu, mm. to name a few. Okay. Yeah. All right. And is there one particular um, martial arts form that is you hold closer to your heart? Yeah, almost all. It's oh. hard for me to separate. Okay. <laughs> yes, it seems, it seems seems like when I practice, I need to know how to use my hand, how to use my leg, mm. and the whole body. Mm. Uh, in uh, taekwondo, I use more legs. In mm. karate, I use more hand. In judo, I use more body. Okay. The whole body of mine. Yeah. All right. All right. So you started off very young, um, practicing martial arts and you know, kind of honing in on your skills. Did you also enter yourselves in competition since then? Yes. Yeah. Can you tell I, us about that? Yeah, I entered a few karate tournaments at that time, mm -hmm. and a uh, few taekwondo tournaments. Yeah, two type of taekwondo, ITF and WTF at yeah. that time. So I just entered, but okay, it was history. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure you know. That's that's part and parcel of a, a martial artist, you know, going for tournaments. You learn so much. You meet different martial artists yeah. at that area. Maybe this was this whole environment was what um, sparked this interest for you to go on and start the stealth organization. Was yes. that what that um, inspired stealth organization? The stealth organizations. The main vision is to make sure everybody know the values of martial arts. Oh. We want to make sure that uh, students, especially the young one know the essence of why they have to learn martial arts. Mm. It's easy to say the, the style of martial arts, my point is that uh, when we mention the word martial arts, mm. uh, the public will look at the martial and the art. Okay. Actually, martial arts is actually for, to protect your life, mm. to, to protect your, your life. So if we call it, learn how to protect your life, I think it would be better. But uh, now, because of the word martials, focus more on the combat engagement. Yeah. The art, actually, there's a sign in that art. So that's how step promotes. Yeah, that, that's very interesting that you said that, Doctor, because I remember the reason my father sent me for martial arts because he said, oh, 
if someone tries to be funny with you or tries to kidnap <laughs> you, then you can defend yourself. Sure. But when I was in, in Taekwondo itself, I begin to understand that it's a way of life. There are so many values and there's a philosophy that you have to follow. Could you perhaps share some of the values? Okay. Um, simple, because if we say karate, karate do, ju, judo, um, ken, ken do, yomu do, there are lots of do behind, uh, right behind the sentence. The, the meaning, the technical meaning is more on the, let's say, judo. Ju is maybe the gentle ways, actually it's not that gentle. Mm. And the do is the way, how the instructor, how the master teach the student, how you educate the student, how to live with that do. <laughs> Example, uh, let's say I trained 10 years ago, I stopped training for 5 years mm. due to injuries here, that example. Then somebody given you a chance to to try your skill. Okay. Suddenly, wow. Those muscle memory come back because they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> really? Wow. Yes. So you've been you've been practicing um, martial arts for a while now. Yeah. What do you think being involved in the martial arts for for so long has done done for you as a person, or the values it's instilled in you as a person? Yeah, I feel like a car. <laughs> I need to upgrade myself. I need to upgrade like computer also. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. When every time I go for training, I feel like I. I learn a lot of new things. I don't forget my old thing, but I keep on improving myself. Okay. Mm. All right. And that's a very great attitude to have to keep learning. Yeah. 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 Um, now, Doctor, you know, you've seen the martial arts in Malaysia, how it's evolved over the years. Um, what are some of the differences uh, that you see compared to like 20 years ago to how it's received now? Um, and are Malaysians more open to martial arts these days? Yeah. The perspective now is a bit underrated. Mm -hmm. I wish martial arts to be even better than now because of the perceptions. They believe by joining the class, students will learn how to combat, mm -hmm. how to start. Perhaps they look into the negative side. So we want to see people look at martial arts, the real value of the self-control, mm -hmm. respect, and um, <clears throat> during the emergency, what to do, how to respond to the situations. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you find that more Malaysians are warming up to, to kind of participating in martial arts these days? How I wish, yes. I see that in school, I see that in universities, but uh, in terms of percentage, but two-thirds of the class, they join for six months, mm -hmm. one year, due to whatever reasons. Yes, that, that seems to be a very, very common problem, that people pick up something and then kind of let go of it after a couple of months. And what, what, can, what can be done to kind of fix that situation, do you think? <laughs> um, in my point of view, yeah. it has to be the whole nation take two to tango, mm -hmm. because uh, from the regular uh, regulator and also the students, mm -hmm. if it is like almost compulsory, that would be nice. But mm -hmm. it's supposed to also look into the academic subject, yes. not only physical training, mm -hmm. because it's also about memory. Mm -hmm. We only have, we have example memory here in the brain and yes. also our musculoskeletal memory, mm -hmm. of which that one will react. Uh, in case, uh, <coughs> for example, uh, we are aging, by age of 60, 70, we might, you know, of which we don't want, mm. amnesia. Mm. I forget who am I. Mm. I forget what I've done. Mm. But usually my body will remember a lot of things. Sure. Yeah. The martial arts will make you remember how to run at least, mm. how, to, how to react to the situation at least. Mm. Yes. You know, that's a, and you know, it's, it's amazing that you said that you think it, perhaps it should be made compulsory because I remember in the last one year of being in my school, which is Highlanders International Boarding School in Genting Highlands, they made Taekwondo compulsory for all students. Oh. Every Friday morning, we all had to go for this training. Um, what do you think would be the benefits for students, uh, the young, young people, younger generation, if these, like, you know, martial arts was made compulsory in the schools? Yeah, during now this this current year, technological civilizations, students are looking into computers, all those advanced things. They look at that as advanced, mm. but they forget to look at themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to look at them. So I need to make myself compatible to this technolo technological civilizations era where I need to be active as what I see on the screen when they play video game, <laughs> combat game. So mm. they need to be like that, not by pressing the button and the icon will move. Mm. I believe if they can have that in mind, change the concept, they'll be fine for them. That's true. You, know, you still need to kind of give yourself something active to do and keep your, your body you know, yeah. fit. But one major attraction 
that people go for sports is, you know, how well it does on the international scale. How well do you think Malaysia has been performing on the international scale with regards to martial arts? Yeah, we have tried. Mm. I believe a lot of our athletes and coaches have tried. The association also give, uh, even the government also give a proper support. But we have to look into a very realistic, where our size, our Asian size, there are sports that we can't really score. Although mm. there are weak divisions, category here and there, there are a few sports that we really can't go. Yeah. So, like, uh, there are six Olympic sports now, including karate in 2020 Olympics. So, I believe on the pattern side, on the not too much of engagement, mm. we can score. But we have really have to put our effort train 100%, 100 mm. full time. I believe I believe we can do it in the the up, the next yes. season. It's interesting that you mentioned that the size might be uh, one of our disadvantages. Um, so, what are the other things that we could perhaps enhance to uh, make up for the size that we don't have as Asians? Yeah, the concept, the perceptions. Mm. We need to improve on our. We have to focus few students or few athletes hundred percent on the sport. Mm. Their nutrient, their nutritional intakes, their trainings, all has to be perfect. All right. Okay. Yeah. And on that note, can you tell us a little bit about the work that the Martial Arts Federation does to support our athletes um, on, in the international competitive arena? Okay. Uh, Malaysian Martial Arts Federation was formed in 2016. Um, then uh, our vision from there, we start to get masters to get involved. Mm. How I wish I can get all martial arts to be in one group. But it's, it's, it's a bit difficult. Uh, from there, we will do a research. Now we have done a research on martial arts. Mm. So we write a few things about martial arts. And uh, hopefully we can come up with some formula. How can we develop a combat athletes? Specifically combat athletes. Mm. Regardless it's judo, wrestling, uh, taekwondo, karate and so on. Okay. Alright. Um, and it... Sorry. It, so it, it's... Um, the With this you are trying to bring all of these different uh, martial arts under one roof uh, and you say that there, it's, there are some challenges that you face from trying to bring everyone under one federation. Could you further explain what are those challenges that you face? Among the challenges is the perspective of the master themselves mm. and the associations, the interference here and there because they will definitely have their target. It's, it's, it's not like we want to take their positions or, or their visions or their target but we want to improve for our nations. So we... Because Malaysia, like Japan is in the Japan in terms of size, they are also not that big. Korean, they are not that big. Malaysia is about the same size. But when we go for sport, their spirits are stronger. Mm. They really fight. But for us, sometimes that one is a bit slow. We need to improve on that. And Doctor, how do you think we can overcome these challenges? We need to have uh, support from the regulator. Yeah. Yeah, we need to have fun. Mm. When we have fun. We can have more fun. Yes, yes that's true. Yes. I mean, there needs to be everyone coming together to support this main goal. You know, we want to see our athletes performing well in this we arena. Should, yeah. Yeah. You know, can you take us through what is the regular training like in order to get an athlete ready to kind of compete? What what sort of procedure procedural training do you have to go through? The uh, the more they train the basics, and they have to go for specific combat. Mm -hmm. And uh, playoff is very important, mm -hmm. where we can we can simply. Us other, other other states or other clubs from other uh, from other countries mm -hmm. to come and compete with us friendly. Okay. So from there we can see and see where where are the things, and then we have to keep up to date with the rules and regulation of the competition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are behind the rules because mm -hmm. sometimes they modify new rules like Olympic now, uh, so yeah. they, the rule keep on updating. Mm -hmm. so, but the athletes not ready for that yet. So today, you know, um, Doctor, you have spoken uh, so thoroughly about the importance of martial arts and, and why it's yeah. of, you know, great benefits to us. Um, now, for our viewers out there who are perhaps inspired now to go and take a martial arts, um, you know, try and learn it, is there a certain kind of um, art form that you would suggest that is easier or perhaps more for a beginner um, rather than the others? Okay. Finally, it's back to the preference of the the candidate itself. Mm. If he or she wants to try, but I personally recommend she try all. Okay. Give a chance to her body to try all. Mm. Uh, like I said, uh, karate more on the hand and the stances mm. where the body had to stand straight. Taekwondo more on the kicking could be a bit difficult. Mm. Those who are aging, mm. be good for youngsters. Mm. But judo, uh, more into throwing all that. So he has he or she has to look at that. The whole thing mm. and try to look at her convenience and her preference. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, there are also um, arm, uh, arm, arm sports like kendo. Uh -huh. So they can also try that. Okay. There's quite a few options out there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahaizi, for speaking with us today and giving us a little bit more information on the entire you know, martial arts situation here in Malaysia. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to be here. All right. Thank yeah, you, Dr. Sure. Thank you. All right. So if you want more details, uh, of, you know, if you have some questions for Doctor, mm -hmm. we had the information on our screen uh, just then. And we also have a demonstration at the end of this show. Ooh. So you want to stick around for that. But um, before we go off to the break, we, you know, sorry, after the break, wow, I'm getting pretty <laughs> excited about our Yeah, I think guests. we're going to see Shankri performing a little bit at the end. <laughs> at the end, nervous. but before that, we'll speak to Sheila Singham about competition in the workplace. Thank <laughs> you.